Hi all, I have a very exciting gambit to show you today called the Tennyson Gambit. So it's named after Otto Mandrup Tennyson who was born in Denmark, studied in Germany and moved to the United States in 1854. So he played for clubs in New Orleans and many strong players actually picked up the idea from the first half of the 20th century. Tennyson has beaten Emmanuel Lasker as a bit of trivia in a simultaneous game. There's actually three of his games at Chess Gamescom, and one of them is actually a win versus Lasker. And he had a loss versus Lasker and a loss versus Steinitz. So esteemed company there in his three games. So it's a very, very interesting gambit. Uh, let's have a look how it goes. So e4, d5 is one way of entering it, and you play knight f3. So it's like uh, you've, you've, you've ignored the opponent's d5, and here we get this position where you're hitting that night. This mechanism is very interesting. Uh, the diagonal is kind of being compromised. There's less obstruction on it. The knight can sometimes recapture or it can cause havoc sometimes by looking at key squares like f7, e6. So things to bear in mind. Uh, the, the other key thing is that how to get to it. You can also get to it via the reti of the Richard reti. You can play the reti opening off the d5, e4. So we can gambit like this. So we're going to look at seven key uh, moves to give it a structure this video uh, so one of the more materialistic clinging on moves which you should welcome is f5 because it's kind of uh, you know already kind of exaggerating an existing issue uh, kind of making it making it worse the current issue making that worse a little bit to play f5 so you should welcome this move f5 so what can we do well bishop c4 is a really logical move here with added by it. we're immediately threatening horrible things like bishop f7 and knight f7 so say e6 you can play d3 here uh, for example taking and now castling and if they're really greedy you should really be thinking this is huge pressure and you're going to crash through getting your material back so say taking here this is a wonderful line which justifies the entire gambit black is uh, totally basically lost here uh, the king stuck in the center. You should be winning quite quickly after that. So that is just a totally terrible uh, way of trying to cling on the material with f5. Uh, so that's one of the worst possible ways. Uh, if we have a look at this again, bishop c4, and look at some of the side variations. On knight h6, uh, d3 here, and this position uh, is going to be good for white. You've got really big compensation on that diagonal. Damage has really been done. And they've kind of made it worse. Uh, so they've exaggerated the current issues. They've they made them worse. And here, for example, uh, Queen D4, looking at F2 and, and F4, you just protect that bishop, and you're standing with a big advantage. Uh, you don't have to get material. Sometimes, well, you're going to have big threats now. That's a big advantage there. So let's have a look at that again. That sequence. So this is in the F5 clinging on uh, variation. So we'll go back. Uh, so knight g5, f5, bishop c4. So we had a look at knight h6 there. Um, and e6. So I mentioned d3, but also you can, uh, if you wanted to here, just play knight takes e6. This also works quite well because here there's a resource uh, bishop c8. You might want a few options in your toolkit actually. Uh, to make it really uh, a shocking weapon when you bring it out, not too predictable. So, so here, after bishop c8, you're getting an advantage as well. Uh, the you know the light square bishop uh, is doing a bit of damage there, and uh, you've got a very nice position. You can consolidate soon with a clear advantage with with accurate play. You should be able to neutralize black's counterplay. So f5 is is really one of the things you should like lick you know your lips with if they play f5. So I've got this list here. You know, we're going to tick that off for the moment, and now you know we're going to we're going to check out another option. Uh, so, knight f6. Let's let's have a look at knight f6 for a moment. At move three. So knight f6 now at move three. Now here, bishop c4 uh, is interesting. But before we get into that, if you really want to play a quick trap to w win as quickly as possible. D3 could lead you to an interesting trap situation where if they played this, can you see what white plays here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. 
Okay, you can exploit this D file pressure actually, and the queen's only protected by the king. It's expensive if you protect it, so you can knock the king out and then play bishop g6 and win that queen. So that's a quick knockout tool there, just there. But you might want to play a little bit um, more calmly and more scientifically correct is actually bishop c4 as well, though. But that's the trap line. But bishop c4 is going to give you, uh, for sure, at least a decent position. And here it's actually trickier if you take with this knight to leave this knight around. So that kind of sets another trap. If they don't take, I mean, if they do take here, you're okay. Uh, and it doesn't really matter, by the way, if they take on e4 and the queens come off, you're okay here. White's actually fine there. But uh, there is a trick here that if, if they um, don't take on e4 and they just play bishop b7 here, So bishop b7. You can actually play, guess what you can play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, you can go bang, knight takes f7. And this is really good for white after bishop takes e6. If here, then you just castle and the king's stuck in the center and it's going to be big trouble. It's going to be uh, like winning material and stuff like that. Uh, if we look at this again, so after bishop b7, knight takes. Um, so this situation, bishop takes. If instead of knight c6, they played h6, then you just play this, queen e2. They, you let them take that knight because of this discovered check. And this is like checkmate there. And if they go to d6 instead, then check here and then d4 check. And there's a big king hunt here which is uh, totally winning. It's going to end in checkmate pretty soon. Checkmate there. So it's all pretty fun stuff uh, in that line. So that's um very, very interesting line. So that was in uh, knight, the, the knight f6 line there we had a look at just for briefly. So knight f6. I'm just going <laughs> to tick that off here to keep track of myself. Uh, let's have a look now at um, knight d7. So this is, these are the move free alternatives. On knight d7, maybe you know you can just consider taking. And here, uh, knight bc3. Uh, it looks as though this sort of situation, you can actually get a small edge with correct technical play. So for example, like this, and queen d4 hitting in this situation the h8 rook, you get a very nice position like this. So, uh, you know, there's opportunities to get a decent position. This is not one of those losing gamuts. There are various opportunities to get uh, decent positions. So that's knight d7. Let's have a look now at uh, move three again. We'll go to move three and look at bishop f5. So this is always after knight g5. We, um, we're going to have a look now at bishop f5, another clinging on style move. Now here, knight c3. Knight f6. D3 is interesting. Uh, there has actually been a Lawrence Trent game against um, international master John Bartholomew with queen e2. That that was actually a very, very interesting game. I think black made a few mistakes and, and uh, did lose that. So it you know, shows it can be quite dangerous, especially in online like rapid tournaments. I think it was a, a rapid time control. So queen e2 is also you know quite interesting here. But we're looking at d3 in particular. And after taking um, Queen F3, now although in theory, if you look at the serious like one day chess games on on chess base, a lot of them do actually end favorably for black. But I think at least technically you can get a, a playable position in this line. It is kind of a critical test, uh, but you you can get a, at least an even position to play with. It's it's not like one of those losing gamuts, as I say. Um, so. Okay, so that's bishop f5. Now let's go back to move three and have a look at e5. So after this knight g5, we're gonna we're gonna have a look at uh, e5 now. And this is one of the best systems where black's trying to get a dark square grip, and it's also immediately hitting that knight. So if the knight uh, takes here, then after f5, knight g3, you know black's doing really quite well here. Probably c3 is one of the better moves. 
I mentioned an Akura answer recently, which triggered this whole enthusiasm to investigate. That actually, I I think here black um, is is in good shape uh, here with Queen H4 sometimes hitting that, and sometimes you know F4 and black can get a very dangerous looking position sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, it can go a bit pear shaped actually in this variation. This is a very, very tricky line, this E5, just hitting like getting white to take on E4. It's one of the very best systems against this gamut and explains why this gamut isn't really that popular. E5 is a really, really solid, dangerous move. So if you have to take now, uh, after knight G3, a lesser experience player might do something silly though. They might do something silly like F4, which is which is uh, overkill, and that does give you the opportunity to play Queen H5 check and then take on E5. So you'll you'll be actually getting a big advantage there. So there's a there's a little trap even in this line, but generally this with Black having the dark square grip, objectively, uh, this is going to be a very very tricky way to play. You can try and play to create some mayhem here, damage the, the structure. But really, black's going to be at least slightly better. So this is one of the off-putting things about this gambit system. That yeah, this e5 line is pretty key for black um, equalizing. Uh, but there are other ridiculous things you could look forward to, like queen d5, which seems to have the same sort of benefit of attacking the knight and protecting the pawn. Now let's say they did queen d5. Here d3 is interesting, and after e takes, there's another little trap here. Uh, instead of knight c3, let's have a look at the trap line first. Bishop takes d3. Uh, so we're looking at queen d5. I should really take that off now. So here, on queen takes g2, guess what white can play here if I give you five seconds to pause the video. White to play here. Okay, bishop e4. And in fact, there's only g4 to go to. Uh, and you just take the queen and then take on b7, and it's embarrassing the unprotected rook on a8. This is absolutely winning uh, for white. Yeah, it doesn't matter about the knight there. You just you just take that rook. That's absolutely uh, winning. Uh, so yeah, that's on that queen d5. Let's go back and look at queen d4 now. Or well, actually, there was another thing to mention about this queen d5, which is not if you don't want the immediate trap line. Uh, with d3. Actually, sorry, there is that trap line, but there's also bishop f5. On bishop f5, knight c3, and then d takes is actually going to be very, very nice for white this position because there are big dangers with knight d5 here. Yeah, black shouldn't be in this situation with c7 being such an issue, for example, like this, and that's the end of the game. So, yeah, that queen d5 is a bit, bit silly, really, queen d5. Uh, also, Queen d4, I think, is an even worse version of events. It's not even hitting the knight. It's a tempo gaining queen. Uh, d3, for example, and then taking here. And for example, knight f6, you just win the queen with bishop b5 check. Thanks very much. Yeah, queen, you know, queen d4 is, is one of the silliest replies. <laughs> but let's just take that off. So e5 is one of the more solid ones we looked at. We'll look at knight c6 next. In this very very quick tour of move free uh, variations, so knight c6, bishop c4, e6, say, uh, taking on e4. This position after d3, you can actually welcome a queen exchange. It isn't that bad. A lot of the fun's been taken out, but if the king goes to c2, you can look forward to a positional game after bishop e3, and maybe your bishops are slightly better than the opponent's game. So it should be at least equal. So yeah, it's it's a very very interesting. Gambit, I thought, but the, the variations you really want to see at the board, just to recap, you really want the material clinging uh, variations where they're trying to cling on to the material and, and they've exacerbated the existing diagonal issue. This is the thing that actually captures my imagination. If pe people actually play like this, <laughs> please let me know if they play like this again. You just play f5. It is really a damaging move which justifies immediately the whole gambit. And the beauty of this gambit is, you know, it can arise so quickly without too many moves from the opponent that it's, you know, if you're well equipped, this could be a really big point score, especially for those those bullet tournaments or whatever that you have to win as as quickly as possible. This is a quick zapper, really, for the inexperienced players who want to cling on to material, uh, especially, you know, that the fatality of this diagonal 
could be quickly uh, shown up. So I hope, yeah, I've given you enough basis for exploring this interesting gamut. Uh, so yeah, please leave any comments, questions, and if you subscribe with the notification bell, that's really appreciated. If you want to try the gambit at Chessworld, register at bit.ly slash Chessworld or Kings. Uh, crusher.tv if you register at chess world uh, there's a thematic tournaments you can try this out the tennis and gamut as well uh, if you want to check out playlists i've been working on recently as well bitly slash leela chess bitly slash stockfish chess okay comments questions likes shares subscribes with the notification bell all really appreciated thanks very much